Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian. Today we are in Moultrie, Georgia. I'll give you a quick tour of the mall factory and show you exactly how it's made. Coming up right now. Okay, so I'm standing here now with uh, the president and CEO, Brent Mall of Mall uh, Air, and we came across a bit of history in the plant, so I wanted to go over that real quick. So, Brent, if you could just give us a walkthrough or a history of what, what we have behind us here. Okay, this is the original M4. It's uh, powered by a 0300 Continental, 145 horsepower. Uh, it was first designed in 1953, and then my grandfather started building it in 55, and it first flew in 57. He took it to, I don't remember the name of the show right off the top of my, the top Rock, of my head. Rockford. But I, think it was, I think it was Rockford. Illinois back when they used to have shows. Uh, so he took it to Rockford and he won the best home built design uh, at Rockford. And uh, we've got a picture somewhere in the office of that. But he knew that it flew well. He, he decided he's going to go into production with it. So this, I mean, Mall started out like many other aircraft as an experimental. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this was the very first, this is first one of this design. The very first one. Yeah. Awesome. It had it had a different, it had a similar shape tail, but a uh, just a little bit of difference. He tweaked it a little bit for the production. Uh, this has got the tweaked tail on it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is serial number one, the prototype. And, and has this airframe kind of stayed the same throughout production of these nowadays? Is this just pretty much it? It's, it's very, very similar. Okay. Um, I mean, almost identical, but we've done some things like uh, add the cargo doors on the other side. And that happened early on. That happened, you know, really early in the production cycle. Okay. Uh, when you look around the other side, you'll see it's got the, the front door the passenger door, but then it's got a little baggage door. He changed it to the iconic, you know, clamshell doors that everybody knows Mall has, so you can load a big objects in the back of the airplane. That happened pretty early on. It also had all fabric wings, fabric control surfaces, which I think after number 11, he went to all metal wings okay. with fabric control surfaces, and then a few more serial numbers down the line, he went to all metal control surfaces as well on the wings. Awesome. So a little bit of history here at Mall. Started out as an experimental. Now, as you know, it's a fully certified aircraft. Been around for 60 something years. So. Yeah. Awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Ty Wilts here at Mall Air. Uh, plant manager here we're gonna show you how we build airplanes so when we get the raw materials in we bring it in we put the PO on all the pieces of metal we put it on the metal rack and then once we get ready to build an airplane we'll pull the metal off the rack cut it to length put it in the nibbling jigs and nibble it to fit all the angles so here we have a nibbling machine and for each tube in the airframe we have these jigs that we fit the tube into and you run it in the nibbling machine and it cuts out for each angle so all the tubes have a precise fit into the fuselage. So that's how you do that's how you do all the fish mouthing on the uh, the tubing Correct. for the airframe. Yeah, and then you might have to go back and grind a little bit and just to make it fit real nice. But So each small airplane that is built is all built in the same jig. So we've got two different jig tops, one for an MX frame and then there's another one for an M7 frame. So the difference is the M7 fuselage is a little bit taller in the back cargo area. So once all the tubes are cut to length and nibbled for their um, location then they're all assembled in here and we have a print that we look at to make sure you have the right tube in the correct area and they're each numbered and tell you exactly what what size tube it is and what the length is so it's like a puzzle yeah so once the plane rolls out of the jig we bring it over here to the rotisserie place it on it and 
all of the small parts are well first off it gets welded out inside and out from where it was just tacked together in the in the jig all the small parts are starting to be put on here the window framing the door framing the fair leads the metal stringers the fairings the vertical tail skylight kit all the small parts are put on on this rotisserie stand so that you can get around it and weld and rotate it and so it's all welded up and then it's all the welds that are on the outside where the fabric's going to be in contact with it'll be ground down smooth much after it's all welded up it'll come over to this section and the horizontal stabilizers will get placed on and they will get fit and the doors will also get fit and then once that's done then everything is ready to go to powder coat to get sandblasted and powder coated so here we have a jig for a horizontal stabilizer so the tubes are cut to length bent formed and placed in a jig the hinges are placed in the jig the ribs as well and it gets tacked together and pulled out of the jig and welded up and then fit to the plane yeah, this is all 4130 chromoly yes sir and then the nose will get filled with lead for the counterbalance weight If you are finding value in this video, hit the like button and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Aero Adventure, Wingbug, and Griplock Ties. And right now, Griplock Ties has a promo for you to get free shipping. Just enter the code EXPERIMENTAL at checkout. Let's jump back in. Alright, so and this is the covering room. And which, which process do you guys use for fabric and paint here? Uh, we use a uh, air tech coating, a UA55 adhesive, and we use Sikonite 102 fabric, or no, I'm sorry, it's 101. These are our wing jigs here. We uh, start out by pre-drilling the spars and fitting the ribs, and then we'll take it apart and get them uh, trio primed for corrosion resistance. Then we'll come back and we'll assemble them in a ladder over in that section. And once the ladder is assembled, we'll put it in the jig and it puts the, the right amount of washout and everything in. We'll uh, rivet on the bottom skin and get that attached. Start the leading edge skin. Once that is in place, we'll take it out of the jig. We'll put it in lay down as we call it. We'll put the top uh, skin on, get it all attached, the tank lids and everything, and end up with a completed wing. This is your machine shop area back here? Yeah, this is our machine shop. Uh, we've got uh, lathes and milling machines and drill presses and grinders and stuff that we build a lot of small parts on. Then this area is our tail wheel department uh, where we build one of our original products, which is the mall tail wheel. We still build it today. Uh, my dad used to build them when he was a kid back in the 40s and uh, we still pr produce and sell them today uh, really popular uh, we also do fabric testers which was another one of our original products and we build those today here at our factory once they've been covered they come and get a base coat of prime shot on them and we sand them down and add an extra second coat of prime on them for a nice smooth finish before we do the paint work on them. So this fuselage over here, it's on its second prime coat. It's ready to be painted for its base color. customers it's a repeat customer so we'll paint the top side of the wing let it dry for a day or two and then tape it up and then flip it and paint the bottom side and the top of the leading edge so wood floor and um, aluminum paneling for the sides 
Yeah, so the kick panels are aluminum. They vary anywhere from 16 thousandths to 25 thousandths aluminum, and it's covered with vinyl, um, which that's one of the things we're working on, getting composite carbon fiber panels approved. The fuselage is insulated with insulation to help with heat and cool and for noise reasons. So you have rotor pedals for the pilot and co-pilot side with master cylinders on the pilot side and slave cylinders on the co-pilot side which is a real great thing to have for trainer planes. So you have side by side seating and full controls on either side of the airplane. All right, so this is your engine assembly area? Or? Yeah, so here we have a, an 0540 B4, B5 engine from Lycoming. It's a 230 horse, 35 horsepower carbureted engine. It's going to be going on a M7-235 headed up to Alaska. So whenever we get the engines to the engine table, we put the baffle kits on, get them ready, um, put any small components on that are needed, and get them ready to hang on the plane. Okay, and how many different engine options do you guys offer? So our engine offers, options we have is a 180 horse carbureted, uh, 235 carbureted, 260 fuel injected. So do you get a lot of calls for constant speed props or just fixed pitch or uh, what's, mostly what's popular? Mostly everything we're doing now is constant speed. We okay. used to do some fixed pitch, but everything's mostly constant speed now. But yeah, this is fuel injection. This is an IO540 V4A5 260 horse Lycoming. Okay. So this is in stage six where the tails will get hung, the wings will get hung, all the rigging for the flaps and ailerons and tail surfaces is done here. The engine is installed, the governor will get rigged up, the fuel injection servo for the throttle and mixture is all rigged up here. this is the baffle kit once it's completely installed. So we've got an aluminum baffle that fits the engine snugly and then we have a rubber silicone baffle to seal it in tight against the cowling to help with the airflow over the cylinders for cooling. Okay. Alright, tell me about this panel here. All right, so with our panel here, we have uh, a you know the traditional six pack over here, but we've accommodated it with two G5s by Garmin. We've also got a Garmin 750 and a Garmin 650 GPS, and we're going standard now with the JPI 930 engine data monitoring system. So you have all of your gauges right here for your engine in one nice small compact area with a large screen that's easily easy to see. So you've got manifold pressure, RPM, oil temp, oil pressure, fuel pressure, your fuel quantities, um, everything is right there. So we've got a aux fuel pump switches here to transfer fuel from your outboard tanks to your main tanks. Um, this M9-260 is equipped with a STEC 30 autopilot. Um, here's the DG and head and bow for the autopilot. I love so, the smell of new airplane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we have a roll shade up here for your super skylight so you can block off that sunlight when it's nice and sunny out or you can retract it out. Um, we've got the swing out windows. Um, our new style door latches, they push down to lock and easily push up to unlock. Nice. The one thing that the malls are known about is the clam style opening 
baggage door. So you yeah, open it up and you've got oh baggage or another seat, here, right? Or you've got room for a small child or a smaller passenger in the back. And these seats are easily removable, so you can remove them, you know, within seconds. So you just pop that seat belt off and pop this up, and out comes the one seat. In the back. So, so this is an optional as a five seater. What's the maximum yeah. baggage weight back here? Uh, the maximum baggage weight in the area C is 125 pounds in the back. Okay, so you put a, a good sized kid back there. Oh yeah. Or and, or small small lady. Right. And then the middle seat, so it easily pops right out as well. So this bottom comes out. And we've got quick release pins up here. They pop right out. This pops down and comes out there. Okay, so you've got a minivan as an aircraft here, huh? You got one tube here that comes out. Fold that back. Oh, that's a lot of space. Yeah, it's a lot of space. Now you've got all that cargo area. No, I didn't realize Within that. Minutes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the uh, How It's Made tour of the Mall Factory. Um, obviously a very interesting aircraft. It's stole performance. Um, I'll share all the numbers from your website and uh, the okay. graphic here. But yeah, what, what is the, the website for Mall? If so you want to go check it out. MallAirInc.com. MallAirInc.com. Yes, sir. Okay. One of the reasons I wanted to showcase Mall, I understand it's obviously not experimental, although it did start out its life as an experimental with the Mall 1 as we we shared earlier, but uh, the Mall, in fact, the Mall MX-7 was the very first airplane that I had, that I ever flew in. So my very first experience flying back when I was like 15 years old was a Mall MX-7, and that was from a gentleman by the name of Thomas, Tom Scruggs, uh, 148 Delta Papa. I'll never forget that tail number. So Tom, thank you for introducing me into aviation and for that first experience being the Mighty Mall a very, very popular Stoll aircraft. So I uh, just wanted to kind of share that with everybody there that uh, this, the mall kind of has a special place in my heart because it's my very first aviation experience and first flight experience, so. A big thank you goes out to God's Country Aviation, Jeff Oliver, and Back Country Aviation for allowing Experimental Aircraft Channel to use their YouTube content for the B-roll of this episode.